Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. And this is the first video where I'm actually drawing in time lapse. I learned how to speed up video in Shotcut. Shotcut is a free program, I believe. And if it's not free, it's pretty inexpensive. So that's what I've been editing my videos in. Anyway, doing uh, sped up videos is as simple as changing one number in like one second. Anyway, today I'm drawing Aurora. You see I'm using this blue pencil. Uh, this is more of the traditional comic book uh, approach to drawing. So here I'm drawing some blue line with this. Uh, it's still called non-photo blue these days. However, that name is uh, from a time long past. Well, maybe not too long, sorry guys. Uh, you see the photocopiers of old, or not so old. Oh, sorry guys, I did it again. Um, they operated on different technology, so they couldn't pick up a certain type of blue. Uh, it just didn't show up. Nowadays, our scanners are so good uh, that they'll pick up even non-photo blue. So it's a holdover name, but it's still, it doesn't really work these days. However, however, the blue is still light enough that um, when you use settings and programs like Photoshop, uh, you can mess with the levels and actually the, the blue will come out more easily than if you had done your underdrawing in a, a dark color like red or, or dark blue. So, um, yeah, so I, I use this method a lot where uh, I just kind of start with the face and uh, jump right to the eyes and, and, and place the ear, the nose, the mouth. Um, the actual skull itself is bigger than that, so sometimes people start with the whole skull and then go in. Well, I, I tend to start with the face shape itself and then build the rest of the head out from that. Uh, is it advisable? Maybe not. Um, but artists start to take all kinds of shortcuts after they've been drawing for a while. They draw whatever makes sense to them and whatever is effective for them. So, yeah, maybe in the future I'll try starting with the whole skull. Apparently it's a, there's a pretty established type of drawing called uh, the Loomis method where you can build up the whole skull. Um, who is it? Uh, uh, insert the guy's name here. This artist did a video recently where he used the Loomis method and all of his faces were really consistent. So I'll have to do a video. Uh, revisiting the Loomis method. I think I studied it at one point, but like a lot of things you learn in drawing, it just kind of gets absorbed and mixed up with everything else. So teaching and doing these videos is actually a good way to go back and kind of separate all that information that's been accumulating in your head. Anyway, this video is going to be close to 18 minutes, so I'm going to have a lot to talk about. <laughs> uh, so I started doing these videos during the quarantine. And you'll probably hear me talk about the quarantine a lot in these videos. Um, I used to work on movie sets as a script supervisor. And uh, after doing that for about four years, I started storyboarding from home um, just as much as script supervising. And then uh, before long, I started storyboarding more than I was script supervising. So I'm kind of used to working from home a lot. However, the fact that people aren't shooting film so much these days, it means that uh, they're not really in need of storyboards as uh, much as they they normally are because nothing's shooting. So I was, uh, you know, like everyone, I kind of went through the this multiple stages of quarantine. Like I didn't, I wasn't sure how serious this was. I didn't want to misstep and, you know, uh, under. Uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, underestimate the severity of the situation. Um, and then it became clear over, you know, that it was actually pretty serious. And, you know, we took it serious as a nation. Anyway, I'm not going to go through the whole history of the coronavirus. But, um, you know, maybe I shouldn't even say that word in these videos. Apparently that it's not good for demonetization purposes. But this video isn't monetized right now. So <laughs> we're not going to worry about that anyway. Um, yeah. And then uh, things seemed like they were maybe getting better. And then we saw news that they were getting worse. And then uh, some people got a little antsy and started jumping the gun. And then, you know, the nation went through that thing that it went through. 
Uh, I'm not sure which words I can say in these videos that aren't gonna make the the bot go crazy. Because you see, all these videos are scrubbed. The audio is like it's like analyzed by these uh, automatic programs, and certain words will raise flags. Anyway, and uh, not even just raise flags, but just automatically just like make it show up less in search results or. Or uh, if you are trying to monetize them, it'll get you, you know what. Uh, so I'm still learning what those words are. Anyway, back to why I started doing these videos. Um, so, and then it uh, looked like we were making progress and then the reset button started getting hit. And then uh, now it's less uh, evident than ever as far as how long we're gonna be dealing with the, the fallout from this thing. And uh, as far as when things get back to normal, it's hard to speculate. And what that new normal is going to be, it's even harder to speculate. So I sat down and I, you know, like a lot of people, like you probably had to do multiple times. And I thought about, well, what do I know? What can I guesstimate at? And what are my plans for the future with the, the uncertainty that's out there? And uh, I realized, you know, well... Uh, I stay home drawing a lot anyway. That's what I used to do. That's what I still can do. No one's stopping me from sitting home drawing. And uh, I know, you know, some. I have some video skills, some editing skills. You see, I thought about getting into uh, YouTube quite a while ago, but uh, I was uh, occupied with other things. I was occupied with my... Well, originally I was... I, I came to LA to be an actor. Some people don't know that. But I came to LA to be an actor, so I was occupied with that, and I thought of myself much differently then. And back then, people who were on YouTube were very much looked down on. And uh, depending on who you talk to these days, uh, still so, but you'll be hard pressed to find an actor these days who hasn't been on YouTube somewhere. But um, when I got into acting, um, let's see, I came to LA like seven or eight years ago now. Um, back then, there was still uh, this attitude in the acting community that uh, you couldn't, you had to be kind of detached and mysterious and you couldn't be online or, or anything or too much of your personal life couldn't be out there because it ruined that mystique and made you less marketable and less respected by other actors. Anyway, we can talk about that more another time. But uh, for various reasons, I put off getting onto YouTube, but with the quarantine and being home so much and just looking at the fact that I'm still drawing a lot and I have these videos, you know, these video skills that I've accumulated over the years, I figured... Why not? Why not uh, when I draw, just hit the record button and make these videos? Someone out there can benefit from them. And uh, eventually I want to start releasing my own comic books. And uh, it would be helpful if people actually knew heck who the heck I was. Because uh, releasing a comic book, because uh, I plan to self-publish and um, you know put it out apart from the mainstream. So I won't have, uh, I almost said the marketing power of, uh, of the big three, but they hardly advertise, which is, I think, a big problem for them that they should really think about fixing. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's going to help if people actually know who I am. So putting out these videos and uh, doing these time lapse, you know, this will this will help, hopefully. So uh, if you could please take a moment and hit that subscribe button right now, it help me out. That'd be really great. And uh, speaking of subscribing, uh, I'll revisit this at the end of the video. But um, I'm planning on giving away this uh, drawing here. This is my first uh, sped up, you know, kind of time lapsey drawing on YouTube. This is Aurora, an original character. The name and the character description is owned by uh, by a, a friend of mine, but um, this character design and this illustration uh, is is mine to give away. So uh, I will, I'll give away this drawing of Aurora, which, by the way, I am gonna scan and digitize and ink and color in the computer, so you'll get to see that. But this original, I'm gonna hold on to. And uh, when I reach uh, maybe 100 subscribers, I'm gonna hold a raffle and give this away. And you'll own the original drawing of Aurora that's gonna be used in the lives, in the uh, online campaign that I'm running, which uh, is called uh, Infernal Legacy. And you can find the first episode on YouTube as of right now in uh, July, was it July 26th or something? July, uh, as of July 24th, to, uh, 2020 you can find that first episode online it's called infernal legacy it's a running of the adventures league season 9 second module called stopped at the gate and um yeah it's me and in five players i'm the dm 
and we're using some uh, information that's in a module that, that was purchased. We roll, we uh, run it on roll 20. Um, but yeah, it's going great. It's going great so far. Highly recommend it. Go check it out, please. I'll, I'll uh, link that video at the end of this video. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm holding, I'm, I'll be holding a, a raffle um, at 100 subscribers to win this drawing and probably several other drawings that are going to accumulate by then. So to enter this raffle, this is the important information. To enter this raffle, please subscribe and please like. So like and subscribe and comment in uh, the comments section of this video saying, uh, let's see, what should you say? I subscribed, I love Aurora or something like that. Just say, I subscribed, you have to say that, I subscribed and then something with Aurora's name in it. it doesn't have to be, I love Aurora. Um, but just something mentioning Aurora and then I'll know to uh, add your name to the list of uh, people in the raffle. So this drawing is done um, on a, is it cards? No, uh, man, my, this is, I'm not editing this voiceover, so this is the real unfiltered Zach. This drawing is done on Bristol board. So this is the traditional uh, comic book method. So we start with the blue line, the non-photo blue, and then we went in for pencils. And so the penciler would normally do this. And once they're done with the whole comic book page, then these would actually be, uh, depends on how far back you go, but um, these would actually be mailed to the inker. Uh, who would then take these and actually some of them would like ink right over the drawing or some of them would transfer the drawing to something else and then ink over that But a lot of times they inked right over the drawing over the pencils, which is pretty crazy as the technology got better um, they would then The inker would sometimes or the penciler would sometimes just make a copy of this and send the copy or the inker would receive the original then make a copy and then ink the copy so that the uh, pencils could remain so that you would have pencils of the comic book page and the original inks because the artists would sell these in a secondary, in a secondary market to supplement their income because here's a secret uh, as far as I know making a living as a comic book artist is extremely hard uh, even if you're working for the the well-known publishers it's just it is not a lot of money I make far more money. Uh, this is gonna sound terrible, uh, but I I know for a fact I make far better money, at least hourly, as a storyboard artist than I do as I would as a comic book artist. So I already know at this point that uh, I want to self-publish comic books. So when I get to that point, hopefully you v viewers will be there with me as we go through that comic book publishing adventure together. But uh, and also I didn't want someone telling me what to do, what to draw, how to draw it, what content to make or what not make or what to worry about. I didn't want that, and that comes with being a part of those bigger companies, which Lord knows. Uh, I, I don't. I gotta watch the phrasing in some of these videos, but you know, we gotta be thankful for these bigger companies, you know, because they kind of keep the um, keep the public awareness alive about these things that we love so much but um the more independent people and the small companies and especially like the the artist owned uh properties and entities you know come on let's uh let's let's empower these let's empower these people more and yeah i'm saying that as a artist who wants to self-publish himself so guilty of that but anyway uh yeah i think i finished that thought I've been taking some pills with Ginkgo Biloba, so hopefully this will happen less and less. Or you can watch through the throughout all the videos as it begins to happen more and more. But that's the point of doing these videos, just put them out constantly, regularly, and uh, and yeah, and just see where that goes. I'm still filling up this channel, trying to figure out where to go it, and so uh, you guys will bear with me. Uh, we'll on. So forgive me if I kind of stumble every now and then. Uh, hopefully it'll add up to something. Wow. Uh, but, but yeah. So I'm drawing her cloak. And it's actually a hood cloak, so I've been kind of experimenting with different methods of depicting the hood of her cloak. Sometimes you can see it in the hood, and sometimes you can't. I really like it when you can tell. And I, I love playing with her hair in front of her ear, down in the front of her, her neck, her clothes. I want to cut 
it, it's nice pulling up uh, pictures of like uh, Roman times or times because of the roots organized and that cults watching like uh, inspired videos and just looking at their hoods and capes and how but um I do these videos and why I'm going to be making them um I'm going to be making them regularly early. and uh I'm going to experiment with this let's see how it goes um if you're watching this video and you like me to draw your character, you can email me at the email in the description, and uh, we can uh, we can uh, figure out figure out an arrangement. And uh, I will record myself drawing your character. That's the fun part. Um, in the future, if things in the real world, if things start to get a little crazy, crazy, then I might have to change up the method by which I go about this. But for now. Just go ahead and email that uh, email in the description of this video, and we can set something up. Let's say for now, for me to draw your character of the size, and uh, post a video on the channel, um, let's say it'll start at 50 bucks. So, that's going to take me about 18 minutes to, to draw the thing. 18 to 20 minutes, hopefully. Hopefully not more than an hour. And then uh, some time to record myself or uh, i'm gonna re be recording while i draw duh uh some time to watch it watch it over and do the voiceover and uh, put it onto youtube um but you say if you email me in the description and uh you'll get you like this and an original drawing and if you want to do the actual original drawing uh, we're gonna have to discuss that and to figure that out i haven't really been good at mailing things so far I avoided it but it's unavoidable unav uh getting closer to the end and again this aurora i should actually talk about the character for a bit uh, so Aurora is a wood elf, and it's important for me to, to elaborate on this to specify this. It is an original character outside of any actual um, uh, properties, like um, different gaming properties, different gaming worlds. And this character has been ported into, or a, a facsimile of her has been ported into uh, Dungeons and Dragons currently. In order for her to be played in our campaign uh infernal legacy on youtube um so she's so in that campaign she's a wood elf sorceress and uh she's young as elves go but elves i believe live for about 800 years and uh i think they mature at like a hundred or so like i think that's how it goes i'm gonna have to revisit my lore but she's relatively young as elves go and uh, definitely, definitely good natured and pretty innocent. So she's a bit of a an ingenue, as we as we say in the industry. Um, the extent of her power we yet to determine. That's uh, part of the fun of of getting to know her better and following her adventure. Hopefully, she doesn't die. Character it is. Um, but even in Dungeons and Dragons, death is not the end, so that's the fun part about fantasy games. Um, my thoughts on running fantasy games and even playing fantasy games, and fantasy in general, um, it's something that I've, I've put some thought into at this point, and uh, I'm coming close to the end of this video, so I guess I can't really get into it now. So I won't. All right. Again, thanks guys. Thanks for coming by, checking out this video. Please, again, like and subscribe. I know it sounds ridiculous when people say this, but it actually, it's so necessary. So please, like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'm going to draw every character in the campaign, the Infernal Legacy, Dungeons and Dragons, Adventures League campaign that we're running. New episodes uploaded on Thursdays. So I'm going to try to keep it uploaded on Thursdays. We actually play on usually Sundays. And um, yeah, and I also have my free uh, monthly ebook available on the website, so check that out, zacklaras.com. And thanks, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Oh, and keep drawing. <laughs>